thank you uh, thank you everyone good evening and the last year i uh, we were in jaipur doing this conference and uh, a similar conference and this time we are in online and that's nice yeah uh, so uh, can i just uh, take the control of the slides myself vishal Yes, ma'am. We are. Talking. Yeah, uh, Vishal. What did you say? Shan, come again. Ma'am was not able to hear. Yes, ma'am. We are trying to give you control. Okay. If you want, otherwise we can start off. No issues. Okay, ma'am. We are not able to give you control, so we can start. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so good evening to all the panelists. And uh, today we uh, are going to discuss, actually start off with the panel discussion on early stage lung cancer. And uh, we all know that it has become a very different kind of uh, cancer to treat uh, nowadays. So can I have the first slide, please? Slide change. Yeah. So early stage lung cancer, uh, not to waste any more time, we are up to 3A, that is would go up to T4 and 1, that is operable, but uh, we would not actually go on to so high because let's focus on things which are a uh, little less bigger and more confusing for all of us. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah. So the first case I would like to discuss is a 45 year, the previous slide. The first case is a 45-year-old male who is a non-smoker. He's hypertensive. Uh, he had a routine health checkup done, which showed an incidentally detected small uh, space occupying lesion in the right upper lobe. Next slide. So, what investigations uh, I would plan next? Uh, I don't have all the names, Doctor. Uh, Prashant, right? One who's oncosurgeon from uh, Bhagwan Mahavir Cancer Center. I think, ma'am, Dr. Prashant is not here, as well as the Dr. Gaurav is also not here. Okay, so uh, who else are there? Can you just uh, give me the name so I can just remember them? Because, uh, it's... Dr. Ananya and as well unfortunately, as it Okay, Dr. Ananya and you, okay. So I actually started reading very heavily in Bombay, so I had to leave and I, that's why I'm, I'm standing on the side of the road and doing it on the car, from the car. No, no, ma'am, absolutely uh, no worries, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Thank so you. can I, another, she, he's already gone to the next slide. So uh, investigation-wise, Dr. Ananya, uh, would you do an MRI brain for this patient? Uh, ma'am, I think, uh, yes, ma'am, it's a very small lesion, but uh, I think MRI brain should be done to rule out any uh, brain metastasis so that, like, exact treatment should be done. And PET scan should be done. Okay. So okay. Next slide. Ma'am, I think just uh, I can add. Uh, can I uh, can I take yes, the decision yes, of please, MRI please. brain? Can yes, I take yes, the yes, decision yes, of yes, yes. Yeah. Tell me. So tell can me. I take the decision of MRI brain after the PET CT report? Yes, you can. Yeah, why not? But the only thing is that uh, I guess what Ananya was trying to say is that even if it's a very small lesion nowadays, we are seeing a lot of non-smokers having uh, silent brain meds probably. Yeah. Uh, but yes, let's start off with a plain CC first. So this was a CT scan of the patient where a very small uh, nodule which was picked up on the right upper lobe. And this was followed by a PET CT scan. So the next slide, please. There was a small 1.5 by 1 centimeter lesion with speculated margins, no nodes on uh, the contrast, media channel nodes. So, uh, next slide. Do you do a biopsy for this patient with a CCT? Would you go first? It's 1.5 by 1 centimeter lesion. Would you go for a PET first or do a biopsy first? Or would you not do a biopsy? Mm -hmm. 
डॉक्टर अनन्या यस सर सर आई थिंक पेट्स पेट्स शुड बी डन फर्स्ट टू सी द मोस्ट अप्रोचेबल साइट एंड इफ देयर इज नो अदर लीजन एंड दिस लीजन इज वेरी स्मॉल सो आई थिंक बायोप्सी इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड मतलब इफ पेट में एसयूए इज हाई देन आई थिंक वी कैन प्रोसीड विद द सर आई एम नॉट द पर्सन टू से दिस बट आई थिंक सर्जरी शुड बी डन एंड डॉक्टर गौरव व्हाट वुड यू आस्क योर पेशेंट इफ यू हैव सच अ पेशेंट i think ma'am uh, actually still uh, i am dr devesh i think pet can be done upfrontly so that we can decide so that we can decide uh, uh, after this the uh, whether this whether the size of this nodule is very small is it is it biopsyable or not so we can decide after the pet ct report okay so can i have the next slide please next so we did a pet ct scan for this patient first next please next uh this is without any uh, i mean this would actually was for a bigger uh, with surgeons included but since we don't have them right now let's go to the next slide please we have decided we need to do a pet ct for this patient next slide yeah next so only problem pet ct is the poss possibility of a tuberculosis but uh, definitely the suv uh, value as well as the clinical characteristics of the, the imaging characteristics of the uh, lesion will give us a, a little more idea about what kind of lesion we are uh, chasing with the only thing is it's it sometimes incorrectly upstages some diseases like n2 which is again endemic because of tuberculosis as well as if if what if it's tuberculosis and we land up operating the patient and when all it could have probably needed was a uh, akt but uh, 1.5 by 1 cm is a place where even i would prefer to do upfront surgery and not a biopsy next please yeah so false positive rate as we all know is around 55% but it is good for uh, at least a primary to see to load any extra thoracic spread any stage 4 uh, lesions to get a idea about size as well as the mediastinal lymph nodes next please yeah so this was a pet ct of the patient again it was a very small lesion the right upper lobe there were no nodes on the uh, pet ct scan and there was no other metastasis so uh, do we agree to do a, a biopsy first or do we agree to do an upfront surgery first Dr. Ananya, uh, ma'am, that's a very like a uh, difficult question for me. But as Not, you said uh, that you will yeah. go for the okay. surgery, so I will say that yes, surgery should be done. Ma'am, actually, uh, and Dr. Dipesh, what do you? Uh, yeah, what yeah, would you just, suggest? I think we can discuss in the, in the multidisciplinary team. So I think all are agree okay. on this part. So definitely, we can go on this surgical part because the it is the medical legal issues why we are doing the surgery without biopsies. so after the mdt discussions Without so we can go upfrontly on the surgery okay next slide please you have done a pet ct scan next do you want to do anything else or pre op investigations directly any role of invasive mediastinal staging for this patient no, we don't have a biopsy in hand uh... in stage 1 i am not sure ma'am but stage since from stage 2 definitely mediastinal staging should be done and as we can see in the ct scan in the pet scan there was no nodes involved no nodes. so i think in okay. stage 1 we can skip mediastinal staging well ma'am doctor dipesh i think you must be agreeing with that in uh, yes, very yes, less yes. less than 2 cm yeah definitely next next, next slide please yeah so as this is like generally uh, a surgeon friendly question that whether you do a a, a biopsy a, a mediastinal staging for something which is less than 3 cm next so we would also not do uh, unless it's a central tumor or t2 onwards uh, the risk of occult nodal involvement is a uh, very less so when if, if you have all the if these two things of central or else t2 onwards it, it's more than 10% so we would still go ahead even if it's n0 but for this tumor which is just 1.5 by 1 cm uh, invasive mediastinal staging is not warranted even if we had the biopsy in hand 
next slide so uh, again same thing next next slide next this patient we did not do because of these two reasons now when we go in and operate uh, uh, dr tipesh do you have a frozen section which you keep at uh, on standby for these uh, patients i mean surgeon nahi hai mere paas koi abhi aur theek hai i think frozen sections uh, will required i think mandatory i guess because uh, uh, we would need to have the primary diagnosis as well as the margins if we are uh, If you are contemplating a segmentectomy or a sublobar resection, yes, yes, definitely the frozen is required. Next. I think, in my view, required. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, next slide, please. So, ah, uh, traditionally we used to have lobectomy as the the suppose if I have done a biopsy and now on on table the frozen is showing adenocarcinoma. So, ah, uh, would you recommend for a one point five by one centimeter lesion? You would recommend a lobectomy, ah, uh, for your onco surgeon in your MDT, or would you be okay with the sub, ah, uh, sublobar like a segmentectomy? I think, ma'am, the size is very less. So, ah, uh, uh -huh. I have not seen the lesser size tumors in my in my practice, even in ten to fifteen years. so very less size tumors i have not seen so i think i have seen still the bigger tumors so i think lobectomy can be done i think okay so let's uh, go to the next slide we'll just go through the little bit of evidence which is changing yeah so the first thing yes we had uh, uh, the first gold standard was lobectomy then there came a meta analysis in 2017 which uh, was tending towards the uh, idea that survival is not inferior in segmentectomy not wedge resection but we did not have a randomized control trial next slide yeah so then this trial came up and uh, this trial came up in 2022 actually which uh, proved it was a randomized control trial and it proved that segmentectomy should actually be the standard surgical procedure rather than lobectomy for patients with small size less than 2 cm and n0 peripheral nscs so this is the first trial which has come in 2022 which has at least till now showed a 5 year relapse free survival is uh, is same and patients were actually better in the reduction of mean post expiratory volume so recovery was better and the survival was Uh, in fact not at all bad it was uh, similar and patients were doing much better with segmentectomy next slide so in that patient we uh, 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 say uh, a lobectomy in fact because that was we also follow your uh, guidelines of doing a lobectomy we would prefer to do a lobectomy man ki shanti hoti hai so we did a lobectomy for the patient he was uh, n0 T1 and he did not require anything. Uh, T1 B N0 did not require anything uh, adjuvant. So uh, uh, a short jump to the next case so that we have more involvement by you. 68 year old smoker, 25 pack years, hypertensive, has history of angina and blood thinners. Uh, in 2015, he was diagnosed to have a creatinine of 1.7. He had renal stenting done because of stenosis. Creatinine normalized and July 2015 was normal. Uh, Uh, again uh, years a uh, routine investigation showed a left uh, kidney 3 cm lesion uh, with incidentally was detected to have a primary second malignancy in the right lung lower lobe 3.9 by 1.5 cm which was also associated with ground glass opacities because of smoking next slide a pet showed uh, next slide i'll show the photos so this was a left uh, renal lesion and a right lung lesion around 3.9 by uh, one point uh, where i have mentioned next slide and it had multiple gjus so it was a poor lung so what do we do next what would you recommend for this patient now he smoker he's got a he's got bilateral renal stent he's angina and he's got primary dual malignancies just want to add in this case ki uh, the uh, renal uh, the renal mass is the biopsy proven renal cell carcinoma yes yes 
So second, just we want to rule out whether this is the metastatic or second primary. That also so, does. That also does. Next slide, please. Uh, okay. We'll just do that. I am giving you two malignancies. True cut biopsy from the right lung nodule is some of lung T one positive. Next slide, please. And the left kidney mass is showing a uh, clear renal cell carcinoma in grade 2. Next slide. In this, I guess we'll do an MRI brain. Yes, ma'am. would an MRI brain for patient. Uh, Dr. Goel, you would do an MRI brain or you would not do an MRI? Yes, yes. No, no. I will do. I will do MRI brain. Okay. So now in this patient, sir, would you do a mediastinal staging? Actually, what in this patient, multiple comorbid patients. So what, what is our goal? Whether to operate or whether to treat with uh, with other other modalities. So I think there is the two, two separate points, the renal cell as well as the lung. So is the patient fit for the two types of two surgeries, uh, the radical nephrectomy as well as the radical lung surgery in this case? Okay. So next slide. I will, let's discuss that. Oh, if, suppose if patient if, if patient is uh, uh, medically inoperable, as you said, like suppose if he's not really really fit, uh, and you plan to give him something else like an SBRT, but how would you do that without uh, understanding the media channel nodes are positive or not? That will change the intent of your treatment. Yes, yes, yes. So we can do so the media channel staging. Yeah. So 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 this is staging will help us. Uh, to uh, decide the treatment. No, which uh, intent, intent, uh, intent of the treatment. So the curative or whether we want to take it as CTRT, and a definitive CTRT or SBRT. Yeah. Or surgery. So yeah, let yeah. us in this patient we uh, let's see surgery fitness. Abhi aayega aage. Okay. We are surgeons. Ham log nahi chhodte. <laughs> so this this has a level one evidence definitely that let's uh, we should have a media channel staging for this patient next next please next slide so uh, initially as we know the the uh, the guidelines algorithm was that you do an ebus and that got established in 2016 onwards in 2010 but 16 onwards we were quite sure that there was equivalent performance between endo EBUS versus media sinoscopy. Yet the guidelines had remained that if EBUS is negative, we go ahead and do a media sinoscopy. So, uh, would you prefer to do a EBUS? And suppose if EBUS is negative, would you go ahead with a media sinoscopy, Dr. Goel, or would you stop at EBUS currently? Ma'am, I think uh, EBUS is sufficient for me, I yes. think. Next slide, please. So, as per 2023, uh, the the, which came, the non-inferiority trial which came, it showed that there is no compromise on the survival or the positivity of the nodes. So now it has been concluded that we can omit easily uh, confirmatory media sinoscopy if it's a negative EBUS. So yes, nowadays EBUS should be considered equivalent and enough if it's negative, it can be considered negative. Next please. This is a patient guidelines. Next similar to what we have, you just said. So EBUS is sufficient doing now. Next slide. So this patient EBUS N2 was negative. Media sinoscopy was not done. Next slide. We did a PFT, which was borderline. Uh, DLC was 42.5. Six minute walk test is okay. Recklessness he has on one floor climbing. Uh, borderline uh, PFT FE1 was around 45. Cardiac functions were normal. He has history of angina, so we got a stressed orbitament test done, which is okay. And creatine with bilateral renal stents is normal. So now, sir, would you do a SBRT or would you go ahead for a surgery? I think, ma'am, first ball in the again the court of the surgery, the ball in okay. the uh, surgery. So the if, he, is a surgeon. Uh, if surgeon is, if surgeon is comfortable with every fitness, so definitely we can go on this surgical aspect first. If surgeon is omitting, he, we can not do, uh, or surgical fitness is not there, so definitely the, the other modalities can be used. Opt. Dr. Ananya, your, your opinion is also. 
yes sir definitely surgery uh, is the priority because uh, cure is better with surgery as compared to sbrt chances of cure i think network i think this is better yes can you hear me now yes 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 ma'am yes ma'am yeah so uh, we uh, did a peep next slide please next slide yeah so now we decided to operate uh, so the questions was whether we operate them together or uh, do we operate pulmonary first renal first and in in uh, lung what do we do so vectomy segmentectomy and what do you do about mediastinal lymph node dissection oblique sbrt right now i don't think i have a medic uh, a radiation oncologist here to actually fight with me i guess uh, so i would say i will not do a sbrt i will do the surgery for this patient next slide Uh, since we don't have an argument me and dr ananya have, have uh, we are very clear that surgery is the best mode and we should not do uh, sbrt unless we are forced in a medically otherwise operable patient so uh, sublobar resection versus sbrt next slide okay, so the first meta analysis which was in 2007 uh, showed that a sublobar resection even is uh, come to radiotherapy when uh, sbrt or uh, complete you do a, a sequential radiotherapy it still lead to better than uh, uh, radiation therapy survival even 5 years overall survival which p value was significant this was a meta analysis of 16 studies which came in 2017 however this was for stage 1 next slide another one uh, the problem was that uh, like just like segmentectomy versus lobectomy the problem is that there are no prospective randomized control trials so we, they were able to do a rct for uh, surgery uh, extent of surgery but as yet we have not been able to actually go and go on to an rct to compare sbrt versus surgery which which makes it very difficult to actually say which is better than the other the one trial which started uh, the axog uh, z49099 which was uh, abandoned because of poor accrual next slide the five year follow up of our uh, nrg oncology rtog 0236 trial again uh, said that the, the recurrence the uh, recurrence rates are probably okay a plus minus here and there 7.3% uh, versus 20% and all that but the main issue still remain one is lymph node dissection and second is undiagnosed nodules in the same lobe less of a point but more is that if there is a possibility of a uh, surgery with mediastinal lymph node dissection that gives a better chance of cure for patients next slide uh this i have already mentioned in the first case next he underwent a laparoscopic left nephrectomy and a vats right lower lobectomy in the same setting because the anesthetist was more comfortable giving him anesthesia once rather than giving him sequential anesthesia twice the only thing is did require a 48 hours ventilation period for his uh, body to settle and the kidneys to come back to normalization he took a little bit of time plus he was a smoker the but he at the end of 40 years to around 8 to 9 days to go home next slide so uh, there is no surgeon here uh, dr dipesh what would you recommend you have a meet uh, whether you would do a lymph node dissection or ananya you please chip in if uh, this uh, you prefer a mediastinal lymph node dissection or mediastinal lymph node sampling for patients especially with the t of 3.9 cm oh i'm not aware with the sentinel node sort of thing in lung so the section should be done <laughs> <laughs> ma'am i think still i am not aware uh, i think sampling versus the dissection i think i am not aware yes sir yeah. okay so basically uh, uh, next slide 
Can I have the next slide, please? So this is only one trial which I wanted to highlight that which showed that, um, you know, uh, uh, why I had put this up because if there was a surgeon, I could have actually uh, discussed this more that uh, there are some uh, proponents of only sampling. But uh, in sampling, the, the thing is that you do the N1 dissection, it's higher section level 10 first. You send it for frozen. If it is negative, you need not do further dissection of N2. You just sample the N1 and leave just like send a lymph node for breast. The only thing is that uh, the frequency of the occult N2 disease is, is just 4% in dissection arm. Uh, next slide. So there was no difference in the overall survival between the but the problem is that a lot of people misinterpret this trial as saying that dissection is not required whereas what they were just trying to emphasize is if you're doing a sampling of the n1 nodes at the higher node and if it is negative to in, in the in the frozen then you randomize then they randomized the patients and they found there was no difference so basically n was was like the sentinel lymph node for lung you do that if it's negative on frozen you can avoid a complete dissection and morbidity of the patient. But if it is not, you don't have a frozen or if you are not able to do it, then you should do a dissection completely. Next. Uh, yeah, so this is the guidelines for lymph node dissection. Uh, at least three N2 stations or a complete dissection as per NCCN. Similarly, the COC says at least 10 should be removed. ESTSJ should do all uh, mediastinal dissections with proper uh, pathological dissection of specimen on table. So similarly, basically, jo, jo dikta hai, wohi milta hai, is the funda what surgeons try to say, whether you should, jo dikta hai, to hum nikal dhe to hum ko occult N2 bhi milte hai, but it is less if your N1 is negative. Next, I have seen a couple of patients who are N2 uh, positive, but N1 negative. Next slide. So this patient was moderately differentiated adeno CA. Final was 4 by 2 by 1.8. Two out of 14 nodes were positive, which was N1, TTF1 positive, P22, N1, M0. Now, Dr. Anaya, would you do a molecular marker study for this patient or not? Next. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, I would like to do the molecular markers. It's like PDL1, EGFR, and LP. Three markers are the basics ones which I would like to do. I think I am still agree so with So in a Dr. smoker uh, uh, who is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I also agree. I send it for all patients. But I'm just, uh, what do you expect more in a smoker? EGFR positivity or PDL1? Uh, one PDL1. So basically here we all three agree that to do or not to do may. Next, next please. Next slide. So basically do or do not, but there's no try. So we do the molecular markers for this patient. And uh, PDL1 is uh, that is a proof that you do very well if your PDL1 is positive. Yes. So that's a yeah. So uh, uh, good I did not go much in this BRD today because uh, I don't have someone to actually argue it out. But uh, this is a short thing considering we are I I skipped some uh, things to discuss. Uh, so anything else you, you or Dr. Deepesh, anything else you, would you like to uh, add on to this to panel? No, ma'am, nothing. I think you have uh, already elaborated everything. Uh, I would like yeah. to just ask ma'am one question that how many patients of stage 1A you see in your like day to day practice? Yeah, so I, I'll tell you uh, yeah, so this this number was very less before COVID hit us in Bombay at least. Okay. So I have, a, I have a paper which got published uh, last year only on the efficacy of uh, CT scans. Uh, we have we have tried to put off a paper and it has got published the importance of having some kind of screening in our country because in COVID one and a half years, we operated around 55 uh, thoracic cases of which 12 were diagnosed because a CT scan was done for COVID. Out of them, nine were early stage. And uh, in, there's one... Uh, senior officers from uh, Goa, there are two senior people in, uh, in in Bombay itself who came with actually T1A and 0 and they got cured with only that one surgery. And that was the middle of COVID and that showed us actually the value of uh, LD city, but it's very difficult to implement in our country because I think including the cost and awareness, everything under the, the sun. But uh, we are trying, I'm trying to push a lot of corporates to somehow get LD city 
in some health checkup form or something because 12 out of 55 is not a bad number to get diagnosed early so yes it was a it was very less but we've seen more and more since post covid so just want to ask what is the number of in uh, what the number you have encountered in your opd for surgery metastatic versus the operable yeah, metastatic is always more, but uh, around I think at least 50 to 55 percent now is coming up, which is operable either upfront or NACT followed by surgery. It's a good number. Okay. In fact, recently I got I operated a patient which was uh, surprising because uh, it, uh, it she had a cystic lesion in the left lower lobe, and uh, the radiologist said I cannot do a CT carrier biopsy. It's like a cyst which will rupture. So you go and you remove it. He refused to do a biopsy and the PET, uh, the CCT showed no signs of pleural thickening and enhancement. Female non-smoker put a scope in. It was an almost ruptured cyst, centered for frozen, positive for malignancy. Okay. Had to do a lobectomy, but that is uh, the chances of having, I think females I'm seeing more now. In my practice, I'm seeing more of females who are non-smokers who are uh, uh, CA lung. They somehow are getting diagnosed enough to be operable. It is increasing, but still at least 45% or 40-45% patients are metastatic at presentation, at least my practice. Okay. Yeah, Jaipur is a wonderful city and thank you to both of you no, to please. invite me. Thank you, Dr. Goel. Yeah. yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, enlightening us. So, I think wonderful Thanks, discussion. So I think sorry, Mr. Sardan are not uh, here because of they both are in OT. So I think Achha. thank you, thank you, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, for accepting my invitation and to be oh, part no, of more, us. Okay. More, more than welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Ananya. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ananya. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.